My name is Jordan Boyd Graber, and I'm going to be talking about Trick Me If You Can, human computer authoring of adversarial question answering examples, where we have humans create questions that are very difficult for computers to answer, and then have live competitions where humans and computers face off against each other to see who is better at answering questions. This is the first in a series of videos. If you haven't seen the introductory video outlining what I'm going to be talking about, you may want to take a look at that first. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how humans actually crafted very tricky questions for computers to answer. But before we get into the details of that, I need to talk about how a question answering system on a computer might work. Some words and phrases are very specifically associated with one answer. For example, if you see the word martensite, the answer is almost certainly going to be steel. If you see phosphonium ilide, you should answer the Wittig reaction. Bob Harris in The Prisoner of Trebekistan called these trigger words. You don't have to think about it if you hear it, just buzz with that answer. A computer can work in a very similar way. It can churn through a bunch of data and find out which words and phrases are specifically associated with an answer or two answers, and then it can do this over multiple words and phrases to combine individual scores together to figure out what it's going to answer. Even though this sounds pretty stupid, and it is, it works well. We've used it to defeat Ken Jennings and other trivia powerhouses, but it doesn't mean that computers are smart in the same way that humans are. Our goal is to create questions that force computers to think and reason like humans have to do without relying on the superficially impressive tricks of memorizing thousands of trigger words and phrases. But it isn't just enough for a computer to be able to find these words and to answer trivia questions. A human author of a trivia question needs to be able to figure out what a computer is thinking and to short circuit it so that the computer struggles to answer the question. There are two ways that we communicate what a computer is thinking to a human. The first is in the form of search engine highlights. So you may have seen this when you used an information retrieval system. You type in a query, and when you see the results, the words and phrases that are relevant to your query pop up in the search results and are highlighted by the information retrieval system. We're going to use the same thing. For our more complicated models, we're also going to use first-order Taylor approximations of those neural functions to highlight specific words and phrases that are really important for the system answering a specific answer. Regardless of how we're doing it, the end result is the same. We can highlight the words that the computer thinks are important for giving a specific answer. Let's see an example of how you might do this. This is the same video instructions that we gave to the authors of the trivia question so that they could learn how to create really tricky questions that computers struggled with. I've started typing in the answer to the question that I want to write. Even though this might be a hard clue, system has seen it before, so it's able to say that if I see the phrase Karl Ferdinand Pohl, then I know that the answer to this question is almost certainly going to be Johannes Brahms. In addition to seeing the guesses on the far left-hand side of the screen, where Johannes Brahms is on top, we can also see what other questions have been written about Johannes Brahms. Down below, you can see which specific words are triggering the system to answer your question with Johannes Brahms or whatever the top guess is. So let's try to fix that. So now the system doesn't know that this is Johannes Brahms, it thinks that it's Friedrich Chopin. So we've managed to create a clue that basically has the same information, but is challenging for the computer to answer. Many authors created thousands of questions that were really tricky for computers to answer. We'll see how they did it, what tricks, what tools, what strategies they used in the next video. This has been part of our series on human computer question answering competitions, where we pit human teams against computer teams to see who's smarter. We help you get in on the fun by creating your own systems or participating in these events and explaining what's going on from both the human perspective and the computer's perspective. You can find more by clicking on the links or by going to quanta.org, where quanta stands for question answering is not a trivial activity.